So I felt really lucky today when I came across these fiddlehead ferns in the store. So when I was in Oregon, I was reading a lot about the Native Americans who used to be in the areas that I was visiting. I was kind of in the Malala um, in the Cascade area of Oregon. And I was reading a lot about fiddlehead ferns being like actually a huge staple of the diet of Native American groups like the Chinook and Kalapuya. And so I really wanted to try them, but it was too early in the season. But when I came back to Texas today and I was going grocery shopping, they happened to be there at Central Market. And so I bought some fiddlehead ferns, which I've always wanted to try cooking. Apparently they cook a lot like asparagus. Hi. Um, for forgive the hair, I'm dyeing my hair. I'm just doing the whole like back home routine. Uh, you know, taking advantage, I suppose, of the terrible situation we're in with um, being sort of stuck in our houses and trying to make the most of it and like clean the house, do laundry, have a nice meal, um, get used to the new normal at home. I was in a cabin in the woods with Millie and then we were on a road trip, isolated in our cars. So we've done the quarantine thing in a really like uh, fun, adventurous way, but now I'm back at home and I have to kind of find a way to stay entertained and keep my spirits up, like everyone is trying to do right now. Um, so I've got to want to start streaming more and I've been like streaming with Instagram Live, but it's irritating me because it doesn't save. And I never remember to click the save, the only moment they let you do it. So I'm kind of just over it. I'll do stories on Instagram. I'd like to just, um, Maybe use YouTube live or maybe Periscope. I'm still kind of deciding. So here's like a bit of a test tonight, impromptu live stream from home while I cook this forest meal inspired by the forest. Picked up a salmon today. Another thing that's really common in Oregon and that was a huge staple in the diet of the Native American, group, American groups in Oregon and also the people there now, I suppose. Um, and I'm preheating one of these Himalayan salt blocks. This one I've used many times. It's got some cracks in it, some, some seasoned by the different meals I've had on it, but hopefully in 400 degrees, it's gonna be a nice little cooking block. So you have to kind of heat them up slowly. I think that one we tried to heat up too quickly one time, and that's why it's cracked, but it'll work. For now. Hi, Angry Pirate Panda. I'm doing great. You have to slowly you put the salt when you're doing this. Um, usually it's on a grill. I don't have a grill at the moment, though I do want to get one in the near future to start grilling more. Um, so I'm going to put these in with some olive oil, just some shiitake mushrooms. I'm cutting up garlic and I have some shallots. So I'm going to go ahead and get those cut up and then I'll start seasoning the salmon. Um, but it's been, I'm happy to be home, I guess. Um, dropped Millie off with her dad, so now I'm kind of just hanging out with my roommate, Hannah. She's got a friend there on the front porch doing like a little quarantine happy hour on the porch, like six feet apart, having some mezcal. I had some mezcal with them, which is good, but now I'm a little lightheaded. Fiddlehead Fern, have you had it before? I've never tried it, I've been wanting to forever. Um, and apparently, it wasn't given as much credit for being like a huge part of the diet until more recently when they were able to like, as you know, like archeology span is getting better, their improvements there, they're able to have a better sense of what was eaten like this or used in the past, like soft materials that don't last as long as like, you know, animals, it's pretty easy to see and like archeology span in the past always paid attention to animal bones, you know, and really focused on, hunting and more masculine things that have more of a physical evidence left behind. But apparently fern, fiddlehead ferns were a huge source of um, a huge staple in the diets. And oh man, I threw away the package that was talking about what, I should have taken a photo. Oh, I did take a photo. It's on the phone. Damn it, I can't use it. Apparently they're high in omegas, vitamin C, some other things. I guess they're really good for you. So maybe if this is, maybe if I like the taste, um, I will eat a lot more fiddleheads in the future. And it's certainly like a replenishable resource because I was in Oregon, it's just everywhere. It's growing like all over the woods, on the ground. It's growing on up trees. It's growing on roofs. It's like anything I can cling to, it's, it's growing on. So 
an abundant resource. I'm going to cut up the shallots. And I'll show you in a second. Let me just get these cut. And I guess it should be a pretty quick meal. The salmon I'm supposed to cook on one side for like eight minutes, flip it over for four minutes. These are supposed to go in the oven for maybe 12, so it's kind of perfect. I'm going to just sort of throw some olive oil and some seasoning on them. Throw the salmon on that salt block, and it should be a pretty straightforward, easy meal. I need to cut up some lemons. Oh, hi. How's it going? Let me show you what I'm doing. Okay, so I've got some shallots. Mix those in. I don't want to get it so thick that they don't get cooked. And I don't know, should I maybe cover it so they steam a little bit? Or should I leave it open so they're, I don't know, get like a nice brown on them? I'm not really sure. Maybe I'll put them in, maybe for the first few minutes I can leave them in with some foil over it. I kind of feel like I should do foil because they seem like they might be a little bit delicate and they could use some steam. Cover for the first half, I think you're probably right. Okay, well I have to flip things over at like eight minutes, so what I can do is cover for the first maybe eight minutes, and when I go to flip the salmon over, I can take the foil off and let them get a little crispy. So I've never really used shallots before, but my friend Marcus, who is here from Germany, he's the one who got me onto the sourdough and sauerkraut kick that I'm on right now former chef in Germany, um, he was, was using shallots for things, and it was really kind of awesome. I usually just cut up a giant ass onion. I bought a whole bunch of different onions and garlic and ginger just to kind of boost the immune system right now. And I've been feeling, I don't know if you guys are feeling this during this whole coronavirus disaster, but feeling like I don't know, just the huge desire to be healthy in my choices. <laughs> Try to be healthier. Okay, so I need a little olive oil. I already poured some in here for the salmon. Let me drizzle that here. Okay. Maybe a little overdoing it on oil. That'll keep it from sticking. And then maybe just salt and pepper. Since I don't really know what the flavor will be, it'd be better to just keep it basic. Okay, let me get some salt. Um, so I'm already really missing Oregon. Um, it's definitely where I would like to be now and in the future. It's someplace very much like Oregon, but I was really, it's just so beautiful in every direction. And I love just like how fertile and everything is and just how tall the trees are and just the nature is so extreme. Millie and I were hanging out in a cabin in Malala and uh, we went driving up on a logging road and found these like really amazing, well, we're following the Malala River and there's parts of it that are um, these really interesting, amazing, like, rock formations from, like, lava, basalt com columns where, like, the lava came up in this really, like, swooping wave pattern and then, like, hardened and broke, and I posted some photos on Instagram, uh, recently. I was just really blown away by some of the sites, and I'm from there, and, you know, I grew up there, I knew it was beautiful, but... I didn't, as a kid, and I moved when I was like 20, when I was younger, I really didn't have the resources to go like just check out a lot of Oregon. So there's so much I still haven't seen in my own state that I want to go back and spend some time there. Okay, I'm going to come back to that in a second and put some foil over it. Right now, let me get the salmon going. Have you guys been cooking? I mean, we can still, at this point, still get you know, takeaway food and things delivered, but I wonder how things are going to change if restaurants are going to stay as open, especially if they're finding that it's more of a, I don't know, it, it costs more to stay open than it does to close. Yes, definitely. No, I'm not in Germany. I posted that video. It's actually from the summer. Um, it just took a while to get edited and also, um, 
I just haven't been as great about, like I have a great editor, um, and I just haven't been perfect about getting things actually out once he even gets them ready. So I've been sitting in that video for a little while. I'm not in Germany. I don't know that there is any travel now internationally, if I even could go to Germany if I wanted to. Okay, let me grab this little, get some of the excess oil off of it. I still want it to stick to the salt. Uh, let me flip you around for just a second. So it might have been better to set up like a laptop for this, but I'm using my phone and I don't know actually how long I'll have my battery for, but it wouldn't take that long to get this going. And I'll plug you in in a second. Oh, I'm getting olive oil on everything. Um, I want to start doing more live streams. Um, just because I feel like I just like to do a lot of different random things and not everything really warrants like a whole produced video. Um, but I, don't know, I like my little world and I'm into a lot of different kind of creative things. And, and the cool thing about live streaming too, is you can kind of chat together. And so that's pretty awesome. This whole idea of a, an interactive broadcast with people. So it's not just about you know what you're doing at any given moment. I just leaned you against the salt that I need. Oh, actually I don't need salt because I'm cooking it on a salt block and it's pretty salty already. So just pepper, olive oil. I'm gonna cut some lemons up. I'm not gonna salt it because it's just gonna get too salty. I really wanted to go fishing in Oregon but um, it was too early for the salmon. And where we were staying on the river, everything else was catch and release and I didn't want to torture the fish. <laughs> All right, so plenty of black pepper. Maybe I should cut up some more garlic. So I've got garlic in the uh, fiddleheads. So I'll just do lemon. All the olive oil on the phone. It won't stay up. I'm coming back, don't worry. Just gotta go grab a lemon. I also picked up some stuff to make pie with, so I don't think I'd have it in me tonight to make a pie. I bought lots of onion, garlic, ginger, shallots, lemons, jalapenos, things that'll be good at building up immunity and keeping from getting sick. sharpen my knives, but I really hate that feeling when you're sharpening a knife. All right, so it starts with skin side down. And then I guess, so I just cook it on top of the lemon. I wonder if these will stick. Just gonna get some lemon juice. I didn't cook fish for years because Jeff and Millie didn't really like fish. Um, so it's kind of exciting, I guess, in some ways, to be able to just decide for myself. Though I find it really hard to cook, to take the time to cook for myself, just me, you know. And I was kind of hoping my roommates would share, but they both made other plans. So I'll just have to put this, have some leftovers. Okay, so let's put this on the salt block. And then get the foil ready. It's supposed to like, it's already been in there getting hot, so it's probably gonna make a lot of sizzling sounds. Not especially super hyper clean oven. Um, how am I gonna prop you up here? On the dish drainer.
need an, another set of hands here. You know, my phone is about to die, actually. Let me grab my charger. And I should shut the oven door so it doesn't get... Lost my connection. Okay. Let's get plugged in over here. And what can I prop you on? the salmon skin side down on top of this block of salt. Here the sizzle. Put some foil over that guy. My Oregon forest dinner. Already smells good. Good. Okay. All right, let's check back in eight minutes. All right. Oh, no, so it's just pulled up right now because I was dying it. Um, I just bleached the roots today because I was starting to look real frumpy and I had the time today. Uh, and then I dyed this darker, hold on. I dyed it darker on the bottom part here. And I just had this kind of up out of the way while it is curing or whatever. Um, but it's kind of in a wide mohawk shape at the moment. And I'm gonna keep it short on the sides, at least for a while, because I really wanna get some tattoos. Um, I'm talking to an artist. Actually, uh, if any of you know Jody Steele, she's a body paint artist. She started doing tattooing and I really like, want to get tattooed by her. And so I told her she could do one of my ears. Um, so hopefully we'll coordinate that in the near future. Um, definitely feel like I need some more tattoos. Hello, Ryan. Thank you for tuning in. We're going to wait here for the next eight minutes and we're going to flip this salmon over and then we're going to take off the foil on the fiddlehead ferns and the shiitake mushrooms and <clears throat> see how it is. And then it's another four minutes, and then it should be ready to eat, depending on the thickness of the salmon. Hi, Connor. So, yeah, just trying to get, you know, you get home and you just, like, there was a lot to do. I had to return the rental car, and um, my van, right before I left town, it's, the battery died. So, I'm uh, tomorrow, be dealing with putting a new battery in and uh, cleaning, doing laundry. I really need to just answer a ton of work emails, like I'm really behind on email. And then I gotta jump back into the totem pole project. I'm gonna be, luckily, I mean, what I do already is so isolated that I can just go to my shop and still be isolated there. So I'm gonna get some work done at my studio. And I just miss, miss what you said. Hold on, let me check the chat. Let's do all, all are visible. Here we go, great. Let me look and see if I missed any of your comments, you guys. Food, yes. Sounds good. It is like a mild asparagus. That's what I hear. It's, it's cooked very much like asparagus. Mm. Oh, just how it goes it. Well, hello, Lucky. <laughs> it's a lot of work to figure out that you just said hello. Oh, so I found Fiddleheads at Central Market in Texas. It's kind of like, so we have this big grocery store here called HEB and then they started their own sort of like natural food store similar to Whole Foods but it's called Central Market and so I was at Central Market today um, I was trying to go to HEB but they had a line for the coronavirus stuff they had a line like wrapped around the building just to get into the building so I just didn't it was not up for that 
So I went to Central Market, but then I spent like three times the amount of money just to get stuff for the week that I would have spent. So I don't know, it doesn't seem like a totally sustainable thing, but I was really in the mood to just get food and get home. And I do like Central Market because then I do feel more inspired to cook because the quality is higher, you know? Why are these chat things not staying? How do we keep that? Let's keep the chat up. Oh, the cabin? Oh, okay, so it was 175 a night, which is definitely more than I wanted to spend. I would normally only spend between 100 and 130 a night on a hotel. But I just want, I mean, it was so pretty. I just really wanted a nice time in Oregon and I don't regret it at all. Like it was great. I just, it would be better because it can sleep more people. It would have been better to bring like another person and split the cost. But um, I will be posting information about that cabin because I think it, people have asked me about it and how they can stay there. It's on Airbnb. I will be posting a link in the near future. Maybe actually in the comment section of this, I can put a link in the comments of this video later on after it's posted. And if you guys check back, you can find the link to the cabin. But um, it was in Malala, Oregon, on 200 acres of old forest. I don't know if it's old growth, but it was pretty, there were older trees, like it was mature. Everything was like super beautiful and covered in moss. It wasn't like, like scraggly new growth or anything. Um, yeah, it was really worth it. I think with like of some other people. Oh, thanks Jacqueline. Um, with more people you can, that it's a pretty affordable cabin actually. Very rustic though. I mean, there were a couple of little radiators, but they didn't put out a ton of heat. It was mostly all like wood heat. So it definitely like took time and energy to just keep like, keep it warm and livable. But once the fire was going, I mean, it was really toasty and nice. And in the summertime, you wouldn't have to even build a fire and it would be just so perfect because you could do an outdoor fire. They had a fireplace and swimming in that river. I did jump in, like Millie at some point dared me to jump into it. Um, I did a cold plunge after being in the hot tub and uh, freezing, it's all like mountain runoff. Like the water in Oregon is like really, really cold, but it was cool, it was, it felt healthy. It got my heart going. All right, we got three minutes now before we can check out, flip the salmon over and uh, take off the foil. And then I think it's another four minutes. It doesn't seem like that'll be enough, but it is at 400, so probably hot enough. They can cook it pretty fast. Um, so it was in Malala, and they were just like around the corner up a logging road. We went and we found like those amazing rock formations and just miles and miles of just like beautiful deep forest with like little waterfalls trickling down the sides like pretty frequently. And just like, I love Oregon so much. I'm really homesick for it already. I was definitely not in the mood to come back to Texas, especially to the city. Like, we didn't have line, long lines like where we were. Like, there were no lines to get in the grocery store or anything, you know. Um, it was a pretty small community and didn't, it felt like remote and like nice and quarantined. Okay, that's better. There we go. Except it's still crusty from hair dye. I really need some fresh hair and so I need to paint my nails and I just need to make an effort. I want to do some tanning. Millie and I were watching so much Kardashians on the way back, and now I'm like, oh my God, I need to put some work into this. <laughs> I need to get a tan. I think I'm gonna do some work in my garden at home, and that'll be a way to tan and still get things done. Oh, I'm eager to open it, but I probably shouldn't yet. I kind of stocked up on a bunch of things. Oh, so the bones. Uh, Eric is talking about we, my dad and Millie and I went and looked at this old wigwam burner in Oregon. And I hear that the word wigwam burner is like insensitive. I don't know how much I agree with that. They said they changed the name to beehive burners, even though it was like long after they ever stopped using them. And it seems kind of strange to me to change the name of something after it's already been discontinued and not in use. So they were known by everyone up there as wigwam burners. Anyway, it's like big steel structure they used to burn like remnants of like logging operations like branches and sawdust and stuff that they couldn't use for anything and then they stopped using them in the 70s um, because they caused a lot of pollution like air pollution and they started also just using all the parts of the log for things so if they've I mean really everything is used I think now like it turned into mulch or paper pulp um, so I don't think that there's a real need to burn any of the extra stuff anymore but uh, anyway, we went and toured this old abandoned wigwam burner in Philomath, Oregon. We found a pile of bones 
inside. Oh, okay, hold on. Let's do the let's do the thing real fast, and I'll tell you the rest of the story. Ooh, all right. It's just looking like the bottom is getting cooked there. Grab my. Okay. Um, how am I gonna prop you all up so I don't drop my phone? Does this work? Can I get you to see the oven that way? Here, maybe. Kind of. It does not seem very stable. Stay. Stay, don't move. Okay. I'm gonna flip it on top of the lemons and just let them kind of cook into the meat a little bit rather than like displacing them too much. Uh, I lost the skin right there. Okay, pull up our tin foil. Ouch, the one. Hmm. I think this might have to cook longer than this. We did four minutes. Let's see how that goes. I mean, it tastes pretty good. Mm. Let's do five minutes. Let's see how that goes. Okay, rest of the story. So we were <clears throat> beautiful sights in Texas. Uh, I'm a little down on Texas these days, especially after coming right back from Oregon. And I drive, do a lot of cross country road trips. And uh, I'm anyone who's from Texas who's watching this is gonna get mad at me because everyone is so fucking obsessed with this place who, who's from here. But when things start to get flatter and more washed out and shorter and uglier, I know I'm getting close to Texas. So um, not the best train in the world. I'm sorry. There's, I'm in the best part of Texas, like near the hill country, if you can call these hills. I'm, I'm sorry, it's not the best place on earth. Nope. Uh, I'm just here for a while. But if you wanna talk about Oregon and places to see in Oregon, um, it's so pretty anywhere you look. I'm like, it doesn't even matter. I'm not really into the high desert part, like Eastern Oregon or Southern Oregon, but it still has beauty there. Like if you go to Bend, which is not my favorite part of Oregon, it's still really pretty for people who like that kind of thing. But I would say, more like west of the Cascades or in the Cascades. Oh man, we drove through, we were, the, we were going through like Mount Hoodoo area. So, so pretty. Like I have had been thinking more about being in the Willamette Valley, but I'm kind of interested in being in the Cascade Mountains now. Um, I'm looking for property really actively. I'd like to get 20 to 50 acres, probably. I think 50 would be great. 50 acres, mountain forest land, I have been think I think Oregon. However, I'm open to other places in the world, even non-English speaking places. If it's close enough to an international airport, close enough to a liberal city, I want to host things. Um, a while back, I had this place called the Fort ATX, which is like an art music venue and a grungy little warehouse. I want to do something similar, but like a much larger scale in the woods, like an enchanted forest project. That's like my long-term goal, but I'd love to get going on it soon if I can afford to. It'd be interesting to see how things change um, as far as buying property right now, like with the economy and everything. Yeah, if you should feel spoiled being in Oregon. Um, it, I feel like just a few days in Oregon, looking at just anywhere I look, being hit in the face with like total beauty, It's I just feel like it fills my soul up. And I'm really sad I've been gone for so long. Um, I've been gone for like 20 years now, almost 20 years, like way longer than expected. I miss it. Mm, I wish this chat would just stay open so I can see you guys. Yeah, um, I tr I don't want to be like down on Texas because I have to be here, and I, I have really, it has been good to me. Like I've been spent almost all of my adult life here in a lot of ways. You know, like a lot of my major life events have happened in Texas, and I love fireflies and tacos and prickly pear cacti, and I have a lot of friends here but I'm just so fucking over it. 
it's a giant, right, with my giant fingers. Oh. Um, I think I'll try to get a little more sophisticated about this YouTube live experience if I continue to use YouTube. I'm trying to find the best place to stream, and I know, like, those of you watching have probably heard me say this a million times, but there's so many options and places to stream, and I know we can do multicast type stuff, but I don't know, I kind of just want to find the place and just be there, stream-wise. Dallas is fine, it's pretty, I mean, if you like, it's, Austin's getting a lot more Dallas-like, just, you know, money and condos and everything's clean and, you know, I mean, it's fine if you like, you know, new, sophisticated, city-like environments. You haven't found a way to see it? Okay, hold on. Hey, Griffin, how do you watch your 360 from Tested? Um, I used an Oculus and I was able to see it. Um, but I know not everyone has Oculus. I think there's probably a way to just watch it on YouTube, though, even if you don't have the setup, right? Am I wrong about that? Oh, I'll have to look into that for you. Um, but, and there's clips and stuff. You can kind of see parts of it, like that they've been put, that, uh, that Tested put up on Twitter. Like, I've retweeted them, too. You may have seen them that way. You have an Oculus Rift? Okay, yeah, let me know if it works. You know, actually, Tennessee is, there's some pretty land there and affordable. So, I'm curious, live in Arkansas, plenty of motorcycle trips with friends. Oh, right, okay, so, Oregon. Definitely wanna check out the Willamette Valley, check out Portland and everything if you like to, it's a cool city, there's lots of awesome food and like interesting, cute little shops and it's like similar to like a Brooklyn or an Austin or something like that, you know, that's Portland. And the beautiful bridges, uh, but then you can, the cool thing about Portland, even in Portland, even in the city, you can go to Forest Park, which is just like this beautiful temperate rainforest in the middle of the city, drive five minutes outside of Portland, and you're in the woods, you drive like 45 minutes, you're at the coast, you know, you can hang out on the Columbia River Gorge, go see, go to Multnomah Falls and see like amazing waterfalls, like, you don't have to go far to see like totally amazing and beautiful nature, even near the city. Um, and I had like Southern Oregon, there are parts like, or central like Roseburg area with the Umpqua River. There's like really extreme, like Willamette Valley is gorgeous, real fertile, lots of like vineyards and stuff and the beautiful tall Douglas firs, farmland, rolling hills, mountains in the distance. But then you go further south to like Roseburg, Umpqua River area, like that part of Oregon, and it's like the trees get bigger and the hills get bigger and the rivers get like ragier and it's like more extreme even. So, and then Millie and I, I was, Malala area was the first time I've hung out there, um, kind of the Cascades area. Um, totally gorgeous, like really, really amazing structure as, as far as like uh, rocks and mountain, mountainous area. Okay supposed to be ready. I think what I'm going to do is stir this a little bit and get the juices kind of distributed and I might keep it in a little bit longer. Let's check on that salmon. Hold on. And prop you up over here on the dishwasher. The, the dishwasher handle seems to be holding you a little bit. Oh, nope. <laughs> Stay. Stay. All right. Let's see if the salmon is ready to come out. Getting this little block of salt out might be a little higher than a typical pan, though. All right, that looks fairly cooked. Oh, yeah, I think that's definitely cooked. Let me stir this. to try these since I first read about them, like, I think it was in high school, read about the fiddlehead ferns being eaten. I never had them before. So I'm excited that they're at the grocery store. That's kind of cool. Especially down here. I would not have expected that. I was kind of hoping to find them in Oregon when I was there and just cook them at the cabin, but it was a little bit too early. They weren't sprouting yet. There were lots and lots of ferns, but um, no fiddleheads. So I don't know where they get these. Or maybe they grow them somewhere. Silver Falls. Silver Creek Falls is like one of the best 
places. And that's actually, Silverton is pretty close to Malala area, actually. So yeah, beautiful forests, rivers, waterfalls. I think there's like 11 waterfalls or something at Silver, Silver Creek Falls. And you can walk like, under and behind them. If you ever had a ch never had a chance to like walk under and behind a waterfall, like that's a very magical experience. And there's a lot of opportunity to do that at Silver Creek Falls. And you can choose like a three mile hike or like a seven mile hike. It's like different lengths if, depending on what you're up for. And you can camp there. Uh, I've had with Millie and I went to Astoria. That's really fun. Astoria is a cool trip. Oh man, there was this really adorable little town we went to called Aurora, which is really close to Malala as well. Aurora is like this, had started off as this like religious commune where like a bunch of people went to live and like have a commune together, like a religious commune. And a lot of the original buildings are still there and you can like take a walking tour and like check them out. And so it's like kind of feels not exactly like a ghost town because people are still there and it's like a bunch of antique stores and stuff. So it's like still a, like a, a living community, but it has a lot of like of the old original buildings and everything you can still see. Okay, my skin kind of detached. So this is a Himalayan salt block and it kind of, fla it, I didn't have to add salt because it just flavors it as it cooks. It's usually used for grilling, but um, I don't have a grill at the moment. I'm gonna let that sit there and kind of cook a little longer. And I'm gonna give this just like a couple minutes. And then we'll do a taste test. Let's try out our little forest meal, Oregon forest meal. Add the, those to your list. Um, what else? Where else could you go visit? Um, I mean, the coast is awesome. You know, Florence is really nice. I grew up closer to Newport, but Newport's, I mean, there's a tourist area there, but it still kind of has like a bit of an industrial, uh, like fisher, fisherman community feel to it, which might be what you're looking for more than like a more touristy, like for Florence's, which is not super far away. It's just west of Eugene. Mm, it's really hot and very fishy. And the salt tastes great. Yeah, I did not need any extra salt, so that's good. Mm. It's real salty. Let me get a plate. So I have these, I collect. I have a few little collections, but one of the things I collect is um, this stone granite ware, enamel ware, vintage enamel ware that's like gray and sort of flecked and there's like different patterns and stuff in it. But my roommate Hannah hates it. She like hates the sound of it and the texture of it. And she gets mad and I bought a new one recently. She got like mad about it. I'm not changing. I'm gonna keep it. But, I mean, I have other plates too. She doesn't have to use them. I don't know why it's even a thing. But Hannah, Hannah is not for the granite ware or whatever it is. Okay. I think that's probably good. Let's just pull them out. I mean, they're not gonna, nothing would go wrong if they aren't, they're a little undercooked. They'll just be a little crispy. All right. Can I lift this without burning my hand or dropping it? Awesome. Okay, so here is my Oregon forest inspired meal of salmon cooked on a salt block, fiddlehead ferns, shiitake mushrooms, shallots, and garlic. Let me just make a plate and have a nice little meal. Ordinarily, I don't like to cook when I'm when Millie's gone because I just don't get inspired to cook for myself. How did, and I don't even know how to cook for myself. Look how much food I just made. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I guess I'll have to eat this in the next couple of days. How does one cook for one? It seems like nearly impossible. All right, a little salmon. One thing I discovered actually on this trip too, as much as Millie always said she didn't like fish, I made some salmon and she liked it. So I think she's open to certain fish. I really want to go fishing soon. Aren't they cute? Like little snakes. Oh, the bones, the bone story. Yes. Um, I need to send an email tonight to report them, but I do think, cause I went back to take some more photos. We didn't have all the shots that I needed. I went back on the way out of town and took some more pictures. 
and took a closer look at the thing we thought might have been a canine, or not a canine, but like a, it, was a, it looked like a tooth. It was kind of sharp. It doesn't look like a bear tooth, but it looked like it could have been a molar of a coyote. So, and I started looking at his coyote skeletons and the hip bones look kind of similar to what I found. So it might've been a coyote, but I'm still gonna send an email to the local law just in case it is a human. We found some bones, like large bones, just sitting on top of this, these ashes. And the ashes had been there probably since the 70s when this burner was last used. Um, and they had like, all the water had come through this like mesh top and like run down through the ashes over time and created all these crazy textures and patterns. And then they had kind of like hardened a little bit, um, probably just from being compacted over time. And then moss grew over them. So, uh, and I, something could have just crawled in there and died on top or maybe it was buried and maybe it was somebody hid a body under the ashes and they got washed away i don't know that's good it doesn't taste like asparagus to me though i mean the texture is similar i'm really tasting the garlic more than anything though um but nice and crunchy apparently they're really high and vitamins, omegas, really healthy for you. I can imagine the omegas just because it has like a, almost like an okra-like sliminess to it after biting into it. I mean, it's crunchy, but it has like a little bit of a slimy coating on my tongue from it. But anyway, let me grab a fork and we'll go sit outside and have some mezcal with Hannah and her friend. Before my phone dies, it's probably gonna die. I come sit on the porch with us. Mm, oh, I want some wine. I'll have to go and grab it in a second. Oh, hi, Hannah. Oh, you just finished dinner? I just made some dinner. The internet. Oh. You want to say hi to the internet? We're just hanging out on the porch. Are you guys about done? With your mezcal tasting? I think so. Mm. We're both starting to eat. There's plenty in there if you would like some salmon and fiddlehead mm -hmm. ferns. So stuff from my pasta, thank you. The ferns are so cute. Aren't they really adorable? Do you want to try one? Yeah, I actually can do it. Here. I wash my hands, don't worry. <laughs> Tell me what you think. Um, than expected. Yeah. Flavor? Great. Yeah, I kind of like they don't have a ton of flavor, but they have this kind of almost like an ochre like sliminess. But crunchy. On the inside only with a slimy. Um, They're supposed to be high in omegas. Mm. And so is the salmon too, right? Oh yeah, for sure. I'm, f I'm doing a lot of work from, from my mood and my brain right now. <laughs> yeah, well we need it. Oh, the salmon's perfect actually. The So you, Tanya, did you eat them when you were a kid? I've never, like, who, did all of y'all grow up with this? And this is just like new to me. Splash of vinegar. Hmm, actually I do really like it when people were putting vinegar on veggies. My mom used to do that all the time. <laughs> Too small to be deer bones. Um, okay, so one, I'm talking to the, these folks. <laughs> I'm talking to the internet. I'm on YouTube right now. Uh, I'm on YouTube? Mm -hmm. Well, I want to start streaming now because I'm at home all the time. Yeah. Um, I was using live Instagram live, but I got mad because I, so while I was what there, happened? well, it doesn't record your video. Like it records your stories and archives them. Mm -hmm. It doesn't do live videos unless you actually set it to. Gotcha. And I keep forgetting to do that. And then it's like one split second mistake and you can't actually retrieve it. Mm -hmm. And so when I was in Oregon using live, I found bones that we thought might be human remains and it was kind of, and it was in a really cool wigwam burner, Oregon logging history kind of setting. And the moment was so awesome, but then it was gone. And so now I'm like, fuck if I use Periscope or YouTube or anything. Yeah. Hannah. This is Hannah, my lovely roommate.
Oh, so you looked. Test the video is only available with Oculus TV. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Well. Yeah, so this is something I think is interesting about live streaming. Um, and I want to start calling, describing whatever it is that we make, because I don't think I want to do a podcast anymore. I think I'd rather just do, like, interactive broadcasts. <laughs> yeah. Uh, S Silly Zombie 666 says, Yes, I'm commenting live. Hi, people. Um, okay, so Twitch, I've never had much success with. I already have followers on YouTube or subscribers. So I thought I'd try it. YouTube, and so far it's so far so good. But Periscope is easier. Are you on YouTube now? Uh huh. I'm trying YouTube Live. Um, but I don't know. So far, Instagram Live and Periscope have the best like numbers and results. But I also think you can't bounce around too much. You have to let people know where you're going to be. But Instagram doesn't save anything. Paris. Periscope's an app that's connected to Twitter. It's owned by Twitter. And so if you post there, it goes to your Twitter account and alerts all your Twitter followers. Yeah. All What's right. What's your preferred social media for, like, regular social media use besides Instagram? I prefer Instagram. Yeah. I think if for artists especially, Instagram is where we should put our energy. That said, Instagram's not totally ready for what it is I'd like to, if for the live stuff, as far if they can't archive it or anything. Yeah. I don't know why they can't. I mean, why couldn't they? Yeah, yeah it's There's annoying. There's artists I've met on the street the other day. Mm. Nice and flaky. Very Jenny Travel type stuff. Wait, so somebody said YouTube is better. Silly Zombie Six 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 says YouTube is better for <laughs> better for live. If you already have followers, if you also want to archive everything you streamed, I stream on Twitch. Yeah, but I heard that with Twitch, that they really kind of force you to really just isolate Twitch, and they don't like it if you post other places. So I was kind of worried about putting any investing in Twitch at all. They all right. So yes, they Twitch has the artist category, but. I didn't get the sense they support it at all. I mean, I couldn't even find the artist page. Like, everything is really gamer-focused. Hey, right I know. She's constantly interfering with uh, <laughs> my streams. <laughs> all right. Did I lose you all to Millie again? Okay. I think I'm going to go so I can eat this. Um, possibly my phone's about to die. This is a nice little test. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'm going to be streaming probably daily, but I'm not sure where yet. Probably here, but I'm not sure yet. Maybe Periscope. Maybe I just go back there. Maybe that's... All right. Anyway, goodbye, you guys. Nice to chat.